Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. From pathophysiology, uh, MR can divide it in two groups, acute and chronic. Chronic, it divided itself to compensated and decompensated. In acute, usually happen after acute coronary syndrome, MI, uh, but it can happen spontaneously, especially patient with MVP or after endocarditis in advanced stage and or trauma. In acute coronary syndrome, uh, the all, most of the symptom in all of those uh, causes is related to increased left atrial pressure and finally capillary wedge pressure uh, and pulmonary edema. And so the most uh, significant presentation of acute is some kind of flu-like symptom, shortness of breath, some degree, and uh, cough with or without mucus. The most significant finding is murmur, but unfortunately only will be uh, detectable on uh, less than 50 to 70 percent, usually at the apex, uh, we can hear very well, but depending on the mechanism of the jet and uh, if it's centric or eccentric and so on, maybe we can hear in the axilla or base of the heart, left parasternal, right parasternal, sometimes mimic with the aortic stenosis murmur, but the, we can differentiate it uh, with radiation to the carotid, AS uh, radiated to carotid, but MR uh, no. Uh, another finding uh, in this uh, patient with acute MR usually is a bilateral basilary uh, crepitation or crackle or rails that uh, depending of the severity it may be go a little higher. In acute MR, if MR is severe, the patient present with acute uh, heart failure, hyperdynamic heart failure, and needs invasive, aggressive treatment depending on the background and cause of the MR, usually is surgery, valve replacement, repairing, bypass, and so on. But if it's not severe, acute can go through the two stage. Stage first stage is compensated. In this situation, in uh, significant MR, because we have a volume overload, left ventricle increased in a little size enlargement, but most prominent changes hypertrophy. This hypertrophy is not significant, but is enough for increasing cardiac output. And another aspect of this type of hypertrophy is usually asymmetric. And in either side, left atrium compliance increased and it enlarged with enlargement and uh, improving some was a dilator in the body the pressure on la drop and finally pulmonary edema decrease so in this stage patient uh, symptom gone usually we don't see significant uh, fluid retention so patient feel okay, doesn't have only problem. This patient has uh, some degree of exertional dyspnea that with exercise tests and all those stuff, we can detect this situation. The most important uh, part, the role of the physician is detecting patient at this stage, because if the heart goes to the decompensated, almost this end stage and we cannot do anything significantly. After this, if the process of MR continue, uh, heart goes to the decompensated uh, stage. In this situation, the enlargement come to the breaking point that doesn't help increase cardiac output based on the Starling law. Uh, it doesn't help and uh, come to the full end stage of the uh, heart failure, both uh, left ventricular and left atrium uh, enlargement, patient start getting uh, dyspnea and even at the resting but a small activity and uh, finally pulmonary hypertension, right side of failure and finally 
uh, cardiorenal syndrome and so on that is uh, usually an advanced stage and so uh, the point of is here that we can detect those patient at the compensated stage and evaluate carefully and if you not if they need invasive and correct treatment we act at this stage here is the relationship between the pressure and volume overload and cardiac output you can pause it and uh, review by yourself up to the next time have a wonderful time